most royal pharaoh. With robust trade routes firmly in place, we should now show Egypt what success and wealth can bring. Bubastis provides a perfect location for such a city. We can protect our valuable trade routes to the east while paying homage to Bast, who has watched over Egypt. Bast's city should be like no other in Egypt. It should be as lovely as the lotus flower, blooming forth with entertainment, schools, libraries, and places of worship. Its citizens should be well supplied with the finer things, including imported incense. When complete, Hubastis will be the jewel in the Twin Crowns. While you are building this glorious city, pay heed to the storm rising in the east. The thundering of horses' hooves are heard throughout Canaan, and lightning-quick chariots are laying waste to all in their path. These formidable chariots, the likes of which have never been seen anywhere, are driven by the Hyksos warriors. Already, storm clouds have been spotted on the Egyptian horizon, and you should steel yourself against the impending danger. Okay. The biggest challenge for this mission will be getting those four palatial estates. Those are 4x4 four four houses and require pretty much everything I can provide. We also have monuments. Uh, just the one? I thought I had a couple. Well, if it's the same, then it's going to be 200. I guess I can find out. Yep. So that's going to be fun. So this will be mostly a waiting mission, and you know how much I love those. The alternative, however, was a military mission, and I hate those more than I do the waiting and building missions. So that is why we're doing this one. Also, this is probably the only time you'll get an opportunity to see the larger palaces, because I am probably not going to be building any of those in the future missions in the next campaign. So, well, what have I got for food? Just grain and the, looks like waterfowl. Hippos might be a problem, especially for the reed gatherers. That should be a lot of fun. But the Kingdom Road is over there as well as over here. I assume this is probably the main one they will come in. There was mention of military, but I think this is less military than the other one. Nonetheless, I have access to wood, so maybe one of the first things I should do is build a warship slash transport fleet, so I can at least do something. And there's a lot of food over here. It'd probably be a good idea, if I can find a spot, to put a water crossing. Okay. Well, it would have to be right there, then. But it would be safe. So, I guess I'll set this up. Now, there's not a population requirement this mission around. It's just those four estates. So I might want to keep the population fairly small. I'll still probably end up doing two blocks and then have one separate block for the other houses, because that's going to be like eight to a side. Maybe I can just add them in. Actually, I probably could, but then I'd I'd be end up. Nah, I don't want to do that because then I'd end up mixing them with the other houses, and then they would have access to the goods and the gods and all that stuff. So it's better to have a separate housing block for them. Um, actually, having two off to the side here, and then having that little housing block here wouldn't be bad. It'd be kind of centralized just in case there was invasion, and then I could line the coast with walls and other stuff. Okay, I think I got it. I've got two blocks down here, and they will be sort of surrounded by walls. I'm going to have this one come around here, and probably up this end over here. And then I'll eventually extend this maybe to surround this, and then I'll probably have this as sort of my woodworking industry area. Um, maybe even put the obelisk over here. But what I'm thinking is that I will probably just leave this open. So I'll have the wall sort of stop here, come up here and stop, 
so if they ever appear on this side they will probably go in there and then I can sort of trap them. That might actually be a little bit of a bad idea because I'd be out of range of the wall towers but I don't want to do what I did last episode and just have huge amounts of walls everywhere that the one recruiter is going to have to try and supply because that's just going to be a pain. Um, out here I've got probably enough fields that will fulfill our food requirements for a while. I've got some meadow here as well. I was going to save that for the flax. I was actually going to put all the flax over here. I can probably get about seven farms here and then have that connect to a road that way. But if I don't need to do that, I can just have it put along here and then I can put a, an irrigation channel. There's not a lot of coast to build on along here. If I want to get over to this side and utilize any of this stuff, the only place I can put one of these water crossings is right there. And um, I guess if I wanted to build into that, I could probably also put... Yeah, that would go there, but that would take up meadow. Which I'm not thrilled about, but if I don't need it, then that's okay. But pretty much all I've got left then is this, and before I can even build any ships, I'm going to have to also build the shipwright, which is a 3x3, three three, so that takes up a huge chunk. Um, there is fish out here. Well, there is, because I've got a fishing wharf. But if I want the fishers, and then I want maybe a couple transports, and more than one warship, because I feel like I'm going to need more than one. Like, I would feel safe with two. I don't know if I'm going to get that. I could build up here, but I don't know if the game will actually let me put it down there. It's going to be too far off. But yeah, basically I don't have a lot of room for anything, especially if I want a water landing across here, which I would kind of have to have. Um, I can come all the way up here if I want to wrap a road along there. And I suppose if I just put a little settlement over here, that would be enough, and then I could have my warships up there. But then the thing is, I don't know where they're going to come in from. I don't know which side of the map. I would hope over here, because otherwise this whole line is going to be defenseless, and I'm really going to have to rely on my walls. But anyway, let's go ahead and unpause that and get some people moved in. It's probably going to be this whole episode, just getting my initial population set up and getting the uh, first bundle of unemployed that I can then shoot into whatever I need to have. Hopefully that one granary there is going to be within range. It will of these two, but for something here I'm going to have to have, have them walk a ways. So I don't know how that's going to work out. And I figure I'll just line this whole area with work camps. That ought to be enough for a lot of that stuff. And then if I also... I mean, down here, I'm going to have a, a lot of area for industry. So if I wanted to put the obelisk nearby, I could also use that. Put some stuff, but we will see. I imagine that I will probably have plenty of people, but... I don't know if I'll have the excess that I usually do or not. And I opened up trade routes to a lot of places. A lot of places I don't really need because they don't sell things. That Like Sawu here, they sell copper and granite, which I guess actually I do need. Um, that reminds me, actually, that is a big pain in the ass that I probably should get started now because last time, last episode, it took, well, past the first two episodes, right? Before I was able to build it. I mean, it took hours. So maybe I should actually do that. It's my unemployment, like, well, 77%, but I want to see how much I've got. 162 people. Okay. Well, actually, first thing I want to do as always, is get my palace down. That way I can start getting money. I guess it's going to have to go there, and then I'll have this very awkward line of 
buildings back here that aren't gonna do much. That's not really good. I mean, if I put it down even one, I could have them line all the way up there. Problem is, though, if I'm gonna put the house right there, which will be how they gain access to their employees, I don't really want a bunch of ugly industrial things along that way, so I won't do that. I will just line that up, I guess, with uh, gardens and the like. I imagine the gods are already hateful. And I didn't leave myself any room for a festival square, really. I could put it close by here, but I don't really want to. I was going to pretty much stack all the gods. I mean, to, to make these 4 by 4s they need all three gods anyway. So I'm going to end up having the temple complex out here, and then obviously two smaller temples, and then I'll put two temples apiece up here for those ones. They're going to need one right now anyway, separately. So I may as well do that. I could put it here. I was kind of saving this for just a 2x2, two two, and then I would have a row of garden in between, but I've kind of cut myself off here because of that platform. So if I put that, I could still put stuff there, and then I don't really want to put it there because of that road, but I guess it's, I could just put roadblocks there and then save myself. I still have to put down the mansion, which I was thinking down here, because then I could line up this road to have that wall wrap around. Okay, so let's do this real quick. I'm going to need... well, who's my... it's Bast. Bast is my my patron. So I will give you Ta and you get Osiris, and we're going to have some little funky shapes in between there, but that's okay. Oh, now you're in the way. There. Okay, so that's taken care of. Go ahead and put a statue in there just for the hell of it. Okay, and then I will put the big temple complex out here. Now this is also going to sort of snag my design. Maybe I should put it there. Because the more it sticks out, the more wall I have to apply. Otherwise they'll just go through this and that's not very good. So I'll have to tear out some of those trees. If I tear out the trees, that leaves me, let's see, because I was going to put the other two 4x4s on this side, and then fill garden, so, okay, we'll just deforest this area. that around. I'll go like that. Okay. May as well go ahead and put down this stuff as well. Okay. So that's fine. Religion is in place. I do need to start putting down a bunch of my shrines just to fill in as usual. Oh, really? You're in the way? Get out of the way. And I could put down another one. <sighs> Fuck. Fine, I'll wait until everyone has moved in. They should be a little bit better. I mean, I still need to put down a festival square so that I can do that. It would fit in there, but... Adding that cross piece of road would just snag everything. Snarl traffic for years and years. So let's put it out here somewhere that I'm very not likely to build. Which is probably right here. 
Unless I'm gonna do. Well, let's see that. Road or that wall will come in there. And then I'll probably put a road out that way. I'll put it right about there then. Can always be moved. Okay. So, Bast being the patron. Jeez, look at that. Interest? Where am I getting the interest from? I didn't know I could take out a loan. Well, anyway... I hope some people move out here soon. There you go. They could move out there just as well. Where did they go? They get swallowed by the wall? Great. Well... Is she angry just because of the temple? I don't know. I don't care. Um, let's put down another couple of shrines, because that is why I left this out here. And I'll just have another... This will be Bast's area, because she's, she's got to the two shrines there. And we can continue with the beautification, which actually went everywhere, which is nice. Okay. Well, I have to be careful not to just keep letting it run. How many exactly do I have? It doesn't really tell me. Oh. I've got 200 employed and an extra 147. Well, that's good. An extra 138 coming in. Um, okay, well now that we've got people out here, I can begin putting a couple of these. May as well just line the wall with them, right? Uh, five will be enough. me down to 14, so that's pretty good. Okay, now everyone else is getting iffy. Okay, well, what to do first? What can I actually export? I can export weapons. So if I import copper, I can start a weapons industry. I can get the flax going so I can start exporting linen. Ah, oh, shit. I'm gonna need a dock. And that's another 3x3. Three Ah, three. Oh, crap. I think I'm actually gonna have to use that coastline up there if I want warships. Because I just, I won't have enough room down here. If I put warships down here, and a couple of these, and then the landing to get over there. I'll have enough room for a couple troop transports, but I won't have any fishing boats whatsoever. I think I may need to do that. And then I suppose I could just take them, as soon as they're made, I could have them, you know, sort of stand in the way, but, ah, oh, damn it. That's kind of a pain. Well, I need to think of something to start selling. I need to import the luxury goods eventually, but... Uh, a wood industry would actually be a good thing to get started. I've got reeds, so I can do papyrus. I can do linen. Like I said, I can import the... the copper and the weapons, but... I think if I do those first... well... 
now that I've put in those things, how much do I have? Only 54 and 100 people coming in. Okay. So that'll be good for something. I'll have to pick one industry because I won't have enough people. But once we start getting that first harvest in, then I can do that. I guess that'll be my first thing. My first thing is just going to be to focus on getting an exportable industry, making some money so I can offset the cost of the import on the granite. I will have to pay attention for the invasions if they come, or requests for troops, or other kingdom requests, because I know those are coming. So I guess I'll get that set up, but uh, not right now. I'm going to end this one here, and I'll see you next time.